Have you ever been aware of this scenario? You have your offer you're presenting to your potential buyer and yet they don't buy and you are not sure why. If so, watch this video. I have a few tips for you. Hi, I'm Doug C. Brown and in this video I'm going to share with you five factors of your offer that influence the buying decisions of your prospective buyers. So, Let's get right to the point. What are these five factors? They are value, service, selection, price, and convenience. Most people don't know that perception of value and service makes up about 76% of the buying mindset of the decision. About 13% of the buying decisions are based on price and convenience and the selection part makes up 11%. So why is this important to be aware of these numbers? Because people do not want to buy your product or service. They want to buy the perception of what it will do for them. In other words, they don't want the features of the product or service, but the benefits that they, not you, consider to be highly desirable for them. So when you're presenting your offer, make sure that value and service will be at the top point of your prospective buyer, then selection and price, and lastly, convenience. Now, remember, the priority matters. So priority matters most. You might think that some people are always making their decision based on price, and for some, that might be true. Yet, I have found things to be very different. Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to go out for an ice cream. One place offers it for $3 a scoop and another place for $4 a scoop. They have the same flavor, but for some reason, you enjoy the taste of the $4 ice cream more. So I have a question for you. Would you rather pay an extra dollar to get the ice cream that you truly enjoy, or would you be kind of satisfied with the ice cream that tastes less enjoyable than you would like it to? My guess is you'd go with the first option, even though it's a little bit more. So do you see? Price is not the major factor that influences buying decisions, so constantly worrying about matching your prices to your competitors and competing with them on price might not be the best strategy for you. Let's look at what actually happened in our ice cream example. You have decided that it's worth paying one extra dollar because getting the value you will get from it is much higher than the value you would get at the cheaper price and the cheaper ice cream. As you see, even in a simple example such as buying ice cream, your decision is based on value. It's important to understand that you, in this case the buyer and not the seller, will determine the value of the product or service to you. The seller can show you the value, yet the buyer will interpret in their mind what that means for them. And by the way, one of the biggest challenges of sellers is to show the value of the offer they are selling in their buyer's perception. Now, what about service? If everything was the same, the same price, flavor, taste, I bet you would prefer to buy from the place where the person selling the ice cream is friendly and has lots of smiles rather than from the person that might not be so pleasant or even sometimes rude. Do you agree? What about selection? If you like variety and one place offers two flavors of ice cream and the other offers four, which one do you decide to go for? Especially if the price, service, and value were the same. My guess is it would be the one that offers more flavors as it's a normal human need and desire to want variety and to make your own decisions. So what about convenience? Well, if one place is three miles from your home and the other is 10 miles away, you will probably will choose the closest place, but not always. Depending on the value perception you have, you might go for the 10 miles away. Remember, if you are the seller, what matters the most is there, the buyer's perception, not your perception. That's why you go 10 miles away. And your job is to find out and understand their perception. How do you do that? By preparing in understanding who your buyers are and addressing those objections up front and asking quality questions during your sales conversations. By listening, you will find out what their perceptions are faster than constantly talking and you being the person talking the most. Well, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please subscribe to my channel to hear more about my sales revenue growth insights. Also, if you would, please comment and let me know your thoughts as what you'd like me to cover next. This is Doug C. Brown from Business Success Factors to your success.